the cut on her jawbone was just real, real sharp, precise cut. A large incision, removing its uh, sex organs, rectum had been cored out, tail cut off. Her milk sac had been cut out on the left side in an oval about the size of a basketball. It's a mystery that remains unexplained after 30 years of investigation. Some claim alien forces are responsible. Others claim cult activity or secret government testing, cattle mutilation. The most recent outbreak appears to have been in a three-county area of northeastern Alabama. Over 50 cases of mutilation have been reported in just the past six months. Organs appear to have been removed with surgical precision. So far, the farmers in the area have lost more than $40,000 in livestock. With such tremendous losses, the police department in Fife, Alabama, has launched an intensive investigation. Ted Oliphant is a Fife police officer who has personally investigated more than 30 cattle mutilation cases. We're finding the same thing over and over again. The sex organs have been removed from the animals, the tongues have been cut out of them, the jaw has been stripped into oval, clean to the bone, and all without blood. Who or what is responsible for the seemingly ritualistic slaughter of these cattle? Researchers have little to go on beyond these decomposing carcasses. And despite attempts to prove that a sinister force is at work here, some experts believe the mutilations are all the result of natural causes. It leads us to think maybe that animal is getting mutilated, but what's happening is predators, vultures, are also involved with that process. The indication that the predators are not responsible for these animals being cut on is the evidence of high heat at the excision, evidence of high heat in excess of several hundred degrees or more according to the pathologist who studied the tissue samples. That pathologist is Dr. John Altshuler. He has studied suspect cattle tissue for the last four years. The tissue at the incisional areas is very firm and very hard and looks burned and the microscopic evidence clearly indicates that heat has been applied and predators, to my knowledge, cannot do that. Here we have a photomicrograph taken of the hide from an animal where we've had evidence of burning. The arrow shows a pink color to the tissue underneath the lining of the hide. As we move towards the cut area, you notice a definite color change from pink down here to blue up here. This is a very typical change of exposure of tissue to heat. Other unusual evidence has been found at some alleged mutilation sites. A white flaky substance was recovered from one Alabama location. Officer Oliphant had it analyzed at one Eastern University. And they determined that it was composed of aluminum, titanium, silicon, and oxygen. Aluminum and oxygen, or aluminum oxide, is what's used in the styptic pencil that I use if I've cut myself after shaving, and that stops bleeding. Perhaps that has something to do with why the animals don't have blood on them at the excision lines. In more than half of the Alabama cases, farmers report seeing an unmarked helicopter leaving the scene just before or after a cattle mutilation. I had a chopper in behind my barn. Had all my cattle rounded up in behind the barn. The chopper, when it appeared, uh, uh, it was kind of unordinary. It looked like it's sitting on a box, you know. Of course, it was big enough to get a cow in, you know. If they catch them hovering over their cattle and pasture, I'd probably shoot him. Probably shoot him. Loud helicopter noise. Sound like it was right over the trailer. Went out the front door, went over to my car, returned the seat, pulled out a handgun. I walked towards the edge of the trailer. I saw the helicopter. There's a light blue helicopter, no markings, no numbers, and it was hovering about 15 foot above the tree. I dropped my holster, and the helicopter veered off. I think the greatest mystery of this case is the lack of physical evidence that we found at the sites. Only in one case did we find that white flaky material. We haven't been able to find footprints, we haven't been able to find tracks or wheel marks or anything to indicate that anybody's even been in there. How do you explain that? We can't. My tendency to believe is that it's something of a lot higher intelligence than what we've got in normal everyday occurrence around here. Don't really have any ideas who could be doing it or 
the reasons behind it, you know. You could get most of the parts they removed from a slaughterhouse for free, you know. Yes, sir, I run a meat processing plant, and uh, I made a statement that I would donate them uh, jawbone, uh, their blood, uh, their rectum, and whatever, you know, if they just uh, asked me for it, and then uh, they wouldn't have to kill these farmers' cattle like they did. Despite the willingness of the ranchers to cooperate with authorities in a larger scale investigation, most government officials are sticking to the predator theory. They do not believe that high tension lines in the area are somehow related to the mutilations. They also deny charges that the government is mutilating cattle in order to support new technology, replacing human blood with bovine blood. And what about the unmarked helicopters? Do they point to the existence of a conspiracy? I think the helicopters are doing the same thing we're doing on the ground. I think they're investigating who's doing this. They're trying to find out, too. And because of their behavior, it's obvious that they'd rather have us think that they're doing it than what's actually happening. Whoever or whatever is responsible may never be known. The silent testimony of these mutilation victims has not been able to resolve the mystery. One of the most intriguing aspects of our investigation is what we didn't find. The moment our sightings team arrived in Fife, the mutilations stopped. Did our presence scare someone or something away? Or was it merely coincidence that our investigation coincided with an end to this bizarre phenomenon?